me just disconnect this. I do still need you fully charged for tomorrow. But for now, doing it too much will only be detrimental. I should I should go close some tabs on my tablet. Way too many shit open. Look at this. Atrocious. Disgusting. All right. Right. Uh, no. Whoops. <laughs> I wouldn't mind if it weren't for the fact that this mod is so damn buggy and filled to the right with crashing. But anyway, that's not the point. The point of this video series now is for me to get a chance to freaking talk about my current obsession at the moment, which is I'm in love with the villainess. <laughs> So let's do this. This the uh, last time we talked about chapter one, so this time I'm gonna be talking about chapter two. The Academy Knights. Hmm. I should see if there's like a subreddit. Or something. For uh, I'm such an idiot. What why did they open up a pack of Nagaraya when I knew I was gonna be talking my ass off while I was recording this? Oh well, no big deal. I'm just gonna finish the one that's in my mouth right now and... Get to talk. Hey! Anyway, that's, that's what I was talking about. Reddit! Cause yeah, it'd be fun to immerse myself within the fandom. And see what, uh, see what it's like. Cause uh... The spark of an obsession is hard to maintain when there aren't other people you can share it with. Hmm. Yeah, no, will, will my mommy like the, the roof book? The <laughs> is now ready to roll. Who knows? She doesn't strike me as the reading type anyway. So even if she were okay. And as for Toryu. He's already decided he's just reading the manga. And that that's no fun. That means I can't talk about the whole with Toryu. I can talk about all of Act 1 and maybe a little bit of Act 2. Or chapter 1 and Chapter 2, I mean not Act. What the fuck am I going on about? Maybe chapter 3, I'm not sure where the manga is right now, in terms of its adaptation. But I do know it's far from even being halfway over Act 1. Do I have any teleporters? You're darn tootin'. Oh, well, this is good. Well, this horse is riding and I'm doing my thing with... I can talk about... I can talk about it over the fucking lovely ass IFTV villainous. And I can get my... Shay... My... I can get my fill. A flare energy. Flare see him. <laughs> yeah, it'd be fun if I could talk about IFTV with others. Rather than just doing this. Or I'm kinda just gushing. I am kind of un- uh, There is fanfiction on the works. <laughs> After story fanfictions are my favorite type of fanfiction, so it makes the most sense. That's also what I'll be doing. If you've seen my Ayakura fanfic- Oh, that one isn't an after story fic, isn't it? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, but yeah, those are typically the types of fanfic I would write if I were to write fanfiction. And I have indeed written fanfiction. Alternate universe. Uh, Fan-made part. After story. Those are the types of fanfics I like to write. Ayakra is a bit of a strange one and... Uh, strange, firstly, in the fact that... I actually have it completed, <laughs> which is pretty rare for me to complete anything nowadays. Uh, I'm still riding off of that high, cause uh, who knows when I'll be able to start work and finish another fucking one of my works. I, un I underestimated just how busy school, college life is. Uh, should have known better than to cheat a friend. I'm currently busy right now trying to get inspiration. And by that I mean I'm trying I'm trying to find songs. I doubt I'll get any in the comments. Maybe I'll ask mom later if I remember, but I do keep forgetting. And that is songs that have the name that, that have love in their name. Why you ask? Don't worry about it. Well, you know, well, you you should know if you if you know me well enough. It's because I'm a fucking JoJo buff and I want to make fan made stands again or something. Hmm. Ah. Why? I I keep getting off topic. I have not discussed chapter two yet at all. And I'm already five minutes into the video. Past. Ah oh, fuck! I took another nagaraya. Oh well, I can I can talk when the, while eating nagaraya. It seems. Hey! Wow! <laughs> it's hot. I need the left front. Uh. Anyway, I lost my train of thought. No. Beast might actually be useful. If I ever manage to at least work on a single chapter, <laughs> you guys can check it out. Check out all my fan fictions in AO3 regardless. So if I do have a fan fiction as of you watching this, then that's great. Otherwise, well, let's just talk about let's just talk about villainess already, shall we? So chapter two. Wow. Academy Knights. Alright, so yeah. let me be frank and start things off with this. Let's get this gripe out of the way so we can talk talk about the positives. Right, in terms of how Ray and Claire acts this chapter, uh, compared to chapter 1, yeah, they're still kind of terrible. Uh, like I said, it is endearing now what uh, rereading the first few chapters, uh, but even as I'm rereading it, the, the whole intent of the first two chapters, uh, I'm pretty sure, is that it's supposed to be comedic and stuff. Uh, but uh, I'll be honest and frank with you, I, I never felt <laughs> like laughing, not once, uh, throughout the first act. 
Because uh, after this chapter, at uh, chapter three and at volume two, uh, which is that, uh, which is the end of Act One, uh, things take a very drastic tone shift in Chapter Three, the Commoners' Movement. But, you know, getting ahead of myself. But I will say that it's around that chapter uh, where Ray and Claire finally start getting some development and start actually uh, becoming. Good. <laughs> now don't get me wrong. The banter between Avoli and their uh, victim and stuff. That kind of comedy thingy uh, happens all the time and I have seen it in like cartoons and other books and other such shows. Uh, there's a way to do it right, and unfortunately, I uh, uh, at least for me personally, uh, I just don't think it was done right. Because <laughs> yeah, I didn't once find uh, anything <laughs> in chapters 1 and 2 to be all that hilarious. Because like I said, I, I found Ray and Claire's antics to be quite frustrating. Grading, even. Uh, but that aside, uh, barring that criticism, chapter two, just like chapter one, is another really well-written chapter. It sows some seeds for the future uh, and, and stuff, and works well with developing characters, introducing new ones, and and the stories itself, themselves, you know, are well written. And while, while I don't agree and find them all that enjoyable, uh, Ray and Claire's various antics uh, are all very well written and stuff. Oh, I remember now, there, there used to be Moljugas here. That's why I haven't gotten the chance to... My goodness. I'll start with this chest. Should have something good now that I'm in the end game. I have used a chest key. Money! 50 rupees! Useless! A humble guy. If you say it's a sword, he says he doesn't want it. But if you say it's treasure, he insists that you keep it anyway, since you since you're the one who got it. Same shit, different response, you know. <laughs> anyway, so in terms of content, that's the what the fuck. He's actually already trying to shoot me, what the fuck? Hey, what the fuck, man? You're- you're way too early. On your cue. A little impatient? Ow. I don't have time for your silly, silly games. No! There'd be no way for it to fall off. Why do I even want this chest? Because I know it used to have something useless in the base game, but it could have something useful. No! Content. The chap chapter 2, the Academy Knights, as you would guess, is all about the Academy Knights, which is, uh, as the in-text points out uh, via Claire's 
all in exposition. It's literally just the game world that she's in. What? What are you doing? Well, I sure am glad I went through the trouble now. I mean, I have no use for it, but... Damn, girl. Yeah, I'll wear it. It's not like I'll- it's not like I'll take any more damage from these bastards. Well, now I need to see what's in here. Anyway, as I was saying, as Ray ex expositions, <laughs> the Academy Knights is literally just the school she the school's equivalent of the Japanese education system's so student council. <laughs> but since it's a magic world, the student council is called the Academy Knights, and they all oh! in here. Uh, they they don't oh they. They're knights. Uh, they act as the student body guard. Uh, the student body's guard. They got some influence. So I guess in a sense they're a little cooler and better than fucking fuck fuck than a normal student council. I swear they did this intentionally. Or every time you fall off, once you respawn, uh, another wooden thingy shows up. Key! Worth it! Worth it! Worth it! Worth it! I'm so stupid. So yeah, it's essentially more shenanigans. It's... Uh, that is kind of the main focus of the first two chapters. The whole point of Ray and Claire's antics in the first two chapters is world building. And uh, the Academy Knights serves uh, mo as more world building as this is uh, kind of the section where we're introduced even further uh, to magic as Ray and Claire who partake in the entrance exams to become part of the student council thingy. Uh, those are like the three major things that happens in this chapter. That being the exam to get into the... to get inside. The knights, to become part of the knights, uh, which uh, has another exam thingy, and Ray and Claire have another contest during there. Uh, but this time, it's not just a mental uh, exam thingy of sorts, as the exam actually makes them uh, have a magic fight. A one-on-one ma -on -one magic duel, which again, that's, that's supposed to introduced to us. I'd like to talk about that, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still just talking about the broad strokes here. For now. After the exams, they become part of the student council, and Ray and Claire get, to do, get into some more shenanigans as they do stuff uh, pertaining to their duties, or stuff pertaining out of their duties. As there are some more stuff here. Food related as well as queer related bullshit philosophy <laughs> thing. Which I might talk about the significance apart from the fact that Claire Array probably just really really likes food. Which, I mean, can you blame her? <laughs> it's an understandable part of her character trait to be incredibly knowledgeable <laughs> in food. Not 
only was it useful in her new life as is introduced to us in this chapter, as she actually works secretly uh, to sell recipes uh, to this uh, super high fancy quality five star restaurant thing called Brume or something. Brume? Brume? Who actually knows how to pronounce these things? Like, uh, yeah, I, I really hate this trope in fantasy where names just have to be fucking nonsense, unreadable bullshit sometimes. Like, how do you, can someone explain to me how you read Claire's last name? <laughs> Please, I need to know. Insert King Crimson speech here. Alright, you wanna know? Fine, I admit it. I don't know how King Crimson works, or in this case, I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce uh, Claire's name. It looks like Francis, but what does that C with that thingy mean? <laughs> oh, getting off topic again. Uh, since I'm already this close, I may as well. I, sh I should say. I should make a save. I'll need to take care of these bastards first. Perfect distance. Never mind. Go fuck. wage slave for all of her previous life. <laughs> it makes sense that the only source of pleasure she might possibly have <laughs> in such a dreadful life, well apart from uh, Claire of course, would be food. Urbosa's fury is ready. Lunch and dinner were probably the only two times <laughs> G 
during her daily life when she was actually probably having fun. <laughs> They're probably usually short lived. Probably just 30 minutes. <laughs> that makes sense she'd take full advantage of her thing. But she does have a bit of a double standard there, but that is uh, answered soon enough. <laughs> Her double standards on how she uses the informations she has access to being an isekai pro tag. Hey. I digress. This, this, I'm not here to talk about that. Alright, and last but not least, you could say this is the main event of the chapter, and that's the school festival. Where, uh, thanks to Rod being Rod, uh, the Knights host a cross dressing maid event. Which I have a lot to say about that, uh, about that part of the chapter as well. So, yeah, those are the three broad strokes. So, let's go through them in order. Oh, wow. Of course it's raining. You know, I may as well make another stop back to Akala. Maybe I can buy some ancient arrows and some more ancient bullshit in general. Who knows? Maybe some fairies as well. Where's the stuff that I have? I could get two more cores, I could get the Ancient Helm to level 3 as well, which would be great. Purely for defensive purposes only though, because I don't think getting it to level 3 will actually let me deal more damage. But who knows, I might just end up getting a sword. Or something. Maybe a shield? I already have the Hylian shield though. Speaking of, I should equip that. Did it, did. Yeah, let's go to Akala. Then I can Revali scale to Zora's domain. Instead. Anyway, my complaint about Brumet. Brume, as I'll call it from now on. B R O U M E T or B B O R O B U R U M E, I believe, as it's spelled in the Japan in the original Japanese text of Villainess. I'll see that. I do have yellow stamina. It's just me. A general gripe I have with the fantasy genre. Not villainess specifically. So you could say, since I ha uh, that trope is in villainess, then you could say it's a criticism I have, but that's, that's nitpicking. I hate it, but I technically don't mind it. I'm neutral about it. Well, I'm not neutral about it. I hate it, but... How do I explain it? Well, a, a short answer is I fucking don't. Let's keep talking about fucking chapter 2. What if it's raining because I've never Ooh, done the Zora quest and I'm just having a delu- and I'm being delusional right now. So, the start of chapter 2 is the 
exam thingy to get into the Academy Knights. <laughs> And again, just like in chapter 1. The uh, player once again challenges Ray into a duel and no surprise, thanks to Ray uh, being the anime isekai pro tag that she is, wins once again and does the same favor. Which I believe they, uh, they did that to signify it, it is foreshadowing, uh, like I said, uh, this uh, book does it, it likes to do a lot of it, and might I say, it does it well. As the two promises, uh, there's a saying I like to say, promises are meant to be broken, <laughs> that's why I don't make any promises. Because, uh, yeah, that shit's foreshadowed uh, the fact that Wraith felt the need to have a uh, player prompt swear the oath <laughs> to God fucking uh, twice, and then it still ends up getting broken in volume two. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's, it's a setup for a tragedy, <laughs> through and through. Why do you insist on get giving me a vegetable omelette for it? <sighs> yeah, I'm just gonna fucking sell this. Four rupees are more worth it than an omelette. Take your stupid beetle. I can get with that. If I am gonna buy, I'd better at least get a thousand rupees. Oh fuck, sorry. Yeah, spoilers for the end of Act 1, I guess. Or Volume 2. <laughs> Come on. Anyone should have been able to figure that out if you have any experience. If you've ever watched or read a single fucking drama in your life. <laughs> but yeah, it's a romance, so of course it's gonna have drama. But uh, at starting around chapter 3 as well, another new genre is added. To villainess, and that's fucking political. <laughs> Yeet. Ah! Oh! Thank you. 
to the content of the exams and stuff. Uh, this is when we're first introduced to magic even for this is when we're introduced even further to magic as Ray, Claire and everyone else who's trying to enter to get into a one-on-one -on -one sparring contest with magic, magic duels and shit. We thought we saw earlier, uh, and we're introduced to affinities and how the magic system works softly, and it does. Uh, and the magic system remains soft uh, throughout the thingy, but uh, here we're we're seeing how exactly spells. Uh, how people do spells as well as fight scene choreography cuz chapter 2 has some really well written uh, fight scene like, I genuinely was surprised uh, by how well written uh, the combats were. Uh, however, although it won't be felt here, what the fuck is going on? Uh, how do I explain this? Power scaling. Power creep. No! <laughs> it's actually a thing <laughs> that happens here in Villainess. There's no power struggle type uh, deal. Uh, magic and magic combat is secondary in Act 1. It becomes a bit more prominent in Act 2. And yeah, that's actually exactly kinda the problem. <laughs> As villainess is an, uh, an, an action uh, book, it's a drama slash romance uh, first and foremost, <laughs> and less actiony. But uh, like I said, there's no Dragon Ball style training, and then uh, they get stronger and stronger type thing. Uh, for the most part, what we're shown uh, people can do, they typically don't learn anything new or stuff. Uh, well, mm, mm, technically, yes, but uh, you should know what I mean. What the hell? No, you no, you shouldn't. Uh, 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 alright, alright, alright. I can explain this. Or maybe I should just focus on the fight scenes themselves for this chapter. Oh. And then I can discuss why I don't like the progression and how the later fights are handled. Maybe. Okay, so, in order for the academy to, to select its knights for the term, uh, the people who agreed 
to, to try attempting to sign up who uh, uh, are taken to an exam uh, which has both wow! a written as well as a practical <laughs> uh, aspect. The written aspect we can gloss over, it's the practical aspect uh, that's important since uh, for the practical the students have to fight each other in a spell duel to uh, judge how well they can defend themselves and therefore the school as being a member of the knights technically should me should mean you have the right <laughs> to attack and protect the school <laughs> with your magic so obviously you should be proficient enough in magic <laughs> to be able to fight off any assailant that comes your way <laughs> and yeah this see uh, this entire arc is pretty important as it shows us Misha's, the three princess, and most importantly, Rey and Claire's magic affinity and how they fight, and you know, gives us more personality. And uh, yeah, just overall, they're really well written uh, scenes. Because uh, all throughout, I was pretty hooked. Uh, they do the because like the way they're it's written it really actually reminds me a lot of uh, the way Jojo fights are handled where there's like lots of moment to moment uh, style mind games like uh for example uh, it's like what's like an example I can give uh, the fight against Rod and Mesha I believe uh, uh, Misha uses her wind power. Uh, she specializes in like sound uh, or whatever. While Rod uses uh, his low affinity magic uh, that ha but he has like lots of MP. So what he does is spam lots and lots of low magic uh, fire attacks. That's his fighting style. And uh, more specifically, he has an army of fire soldiers. And that's how he fights. Uh, and the whole fight is like, Haha, surprise, I have an army, deal with it. And then Misha's like, Aha, surprise, I used my wind to vaporize the fire. And then uh, uh, Rod's like, Oh, I am foiled. But wait, I have a different strategy. I shall surround you instead of going for a frontal assault. And then Misha's like, aha, then I surround myself in a wind barrier which you cannot penetrate with your fire. And then Rod's like, nah, I'm gonna keep doing it. And then Misha's like, oh, okay, then I guess I give up. And then uh, Ray and Claire <laughs> uh, become speed, uh, Claire, Ray essentially becomes speed wagon here. <laughs> where she's like, where Claire's like, huh, why did... Misha give up, and then Ray is like, well, you see, there's this thing called oxygen. <laughs> and, like, and like, yeah, the entire uh, trial, uh, the entire duel arc uh, is filled to the rim with uh, that moment-to-moment -moment, uh, fighting thing, which again, is very reminiscent of Jojo. <laughs> uh, it isn't as complex and deep as parts uh, 3 and onwards is uh, mind game, moment-to-moment uh, -moment mind game bullshittery. Hmm. The short sword might be nice, but maybe I should get another blade saw instead. How much durability does this thing have left? It's still a lot. But, hmm, can I imagine? Yeah, I'm gonna go get myself an ancient short sword. Then I'm gonna go get myself six ancient arrows. I should be able to do that. Yeah. Let's see the durability of this thing. 
Yo! It's, it's only slightly less. <laughs> Alright, I'm definitely gonna be using this in the foreseeable future for now. I'm gonna exhaust the durability of the Master Sword for this current 5 minute cycle for now. And then I'm gonna switch. Dorothea, Dorothea, Zara. Yes, I'm heading to the Nerd Empire, guys. Ah! We're gonna incite a fucking revolution again. Anyway, uh, da -da 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 -da. it's yeah. So if I had high praises, uh, the rest of the fight scenes. In Act One, are uh, are more of this, and like I really like that. Although there is uh, an early sign of the future <laughs> of how the fight scenes would look like in the form of Manaria in Volume Two, which I shall discuss later, or maybe right now, since I'm in the topic of this. Since it's a praise, yet at the same time a criticism, yet at the same time. Uh, I don't hate it, uh, I technically like it, but ultimately, I am neutral in this position. Because, uh, so, 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 so. Yeah, while well, I'm waiting for my horsey to get here, let me open up. Let me open up the fucking fight team. <laughs> let me skim read. <laughs> Misha and Rod's fight. Because <laughs> I, I need to make sure I'm not just spouting bullshit right now. Uh, let's see here. Alright, here it is. The ninth match, Master Rod, Misha, Competitor, Smart, Boo. Flame Troops. And then she, she screams. <laughs> and then that deals with them. He, do, he does a thingy. <laughs> Wind and then she, 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 Rod starts exploding, yep. But then Misha erects a wind barium barrier thingy. <laughs> then he does the more explosion. Uh, and then finally, Misha surrenders because of the lack of oxygen, <laughs> which the explosions were depriving Misha of. <laughs> and like, yeah, since, since. Since the since Revolution's world doesn't have science, they don't know it oxygen, and that's really funny. <laughs> they don't know how to breathe. They can't use hormone, guys. Oh no, they don't know the concept of oxygen. And then yeah, uh, Ray and Claire's, as well as like I said, everyone else's fights are not just really. Hilarious, well-written stuff. Uh, and yeah, the tenth and final match, which is Ray and Claire, uh, is obviously the main thing attraction uh, amongst all the fights, and it's certainly uh, the most interesting and well-written one for sure. Saving the best for last, and obviously it has to feature the two main characters. <laughs> uh, where basically to sum it up. Uh, Claire, uh, desperate to win against the filthy com the cheeky commoner, 
uh, decides to go all out and all that shit. Uh, but Ray instead doesn't even bother going all out. Uh, and, Ray and Claire finds that really annoying. Uh, but she tries her best. Uh, but then Claire Claire's like, Aha, I have fire. Your earth barriers cannot... Uh, I shall burn your earth barriers because my fires are so strong. Nah, fam, Ray says. I'm afraid the melting point of tungsten carbide <laughs> is 3200 degrees Celsius. So you can't burn this shit. And she's like, what the fuck is tungsten? And what the fuck is melting point? Whatever, I'm just gonna go harder. <laughs> and then Claire's like, nope, I'm just gonna go put you on a pitfall or whatever. And, she, and then finally, the speed wagons commentator, which are the princess, uh, in this case, since everyone's already done fighting, that includes the princess, the three princesses, not princesses. Ugh. The plural for prince sucks. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Bam. Bam. There we go. Uh, and then it's revealed that uh, Claire literally stood no chance from the very beginning uh, oh. against Ray. Uh, when Ooh. they point out to Claire, when uh, I believe it was Misha or maybe Rod that pointed it out, or saying, "Yes, if I guess all the print, all the princess, I'll be correct eventually." <laughs> I'll do that. So you should just give up, Claire. If you haven't noticed already, Ray's fucking toying with you. If she wanted you, she could have just used her her water magic, which is literally the weakness of water. But she didn't. <laughs> and then Claire's like, "Oh yeah, you're right. Well, shit." <laughs> and then she loses. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, that's great. It has personality, it has charm, it has wit. Everything mm. I- everything. <laughs> Ooh, has it going for it. Everything's done right. Ooh, everything that I want out of a combat scene. Everything that should be uh, for a oh. combat scene. <laughs> Not for a combat scene. All the fundamentals. Like I said, JoJo style. In other words, good. <laughs> Well-written fights. <laughs> All the hallmarks. Good writing. Oh, uh, are there. <sighs> However, like I said, power creep oh! is kind of a big thing <laughs> that happens eventually. Uh, as the story progresses and the fights heighten both in uh, tension as well as scale. Uh, where suddenly it's just not enough uh, to do all these weird mind game bullshit. You just need to be straight up stronger or else. Uh, so one of the major key factors of the way the magic system in Revolution wor uh, works is how it's immutable. Uh, people could simply be more talented in magic than you and there's nothing you can do. Uh, all men are not created equal, and I was like, yeah, that's fine, I didn't mind that. Uh, I think I'm being called, hold on.
Hmm. Finances. Where's my tablet? Yep. Up. Oh, there it is. Ow! Fuck! It's so dark. God, I miss having lights in this room. <laughs> Moving on. Did the game crash? No. Oh boy, a storm brewing. Look at all these gold enemies. <laughs> so much for sneaking. Eventually, all that charm and wit on the fighting scenes uh, become weaker as the story progresses and the scale of people's powers uh, progress along with its rising tension and stuff. And now it's no longer uh, this cool and clever uh, battle of the mind, and now it's just a dick measuring contest. the end of the series which is disappointing but ultimately uh, I still think the magic system is cool and the fight scenes are also cool and the game crashed that's fine I need water.
Ah. Anyway, yeah. The witty mind game bullshit, like I said, is more akin to parts 1 and 2's. This style of bullshit fighting, writing, Jojo, I mean, parts 1 and 2, Jojo. Where it, it isn't more so about the cool, clever ways to use the stands that you could have figured out yourself if you just paid enough attention. And you're gonna be all like, uh huh, yeah, that's actually really clever, that's so cool. And, and more so uh, akin to Joseph specifically, where it's like, haha, if I put Hamon here, this would have happened, and you never would have expected it. Haha, look how clever I am. And yeah, similarly, that's how the fight scenes, mind game bullshittery, extends as far as a. Uh, yeah, going back to... Claire and Grace fight. Uh, there's this one scene I, I'd point to. <laughs> Again, this isn't a criticism. I don't consider this bad. In, in fact, like I said, I, I like the way the fight scenes are written, as I've already said. And I, I like this... Uh, kind of weird bullshit mind game tomfoolery that happens. Uh, where uh, Claire, in an effort to get past race uh, walls, uh, she redi redirects the trajectory of her bullets mid flight, to which uh, Ray responds simply by turning the shield as well, so she can still block the thingy, and, and then Claire responds to that, uh, again, by, uh, instead of uh, redirecting the, reach, uh, changing the trajectory, uh, instead comes up with a new big brain strategy of fucking turning it from a single target thing to a, instead of a single bullet to be multiple bullets and, and then finally uh, Ray uh, still manages to block it in the end by also spreading out her shield and uh, and blocking each individual's shot at either way anyways <laughs> and yeah since we're not familiar and we never will end up becoming <laughs> familiar because it's a soft magic system like, you never could have predicted the way that fight would have gone. Uh, but the fact that uh, they're taking measures uh, rather than just having these big dick laser beam contests. The fact that that kind the fight scene was choreographed that way instead of just, uh, I punch hard, I must punch harder. Or in, in this case, I magic. I cast fireball hard. I must make. I must cast a bigger fireball. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's great in that regard. Uh, moving on from that part of the chapter, though, <laughs> uh, the middle part is just uh, Claire and Ray hijinks. Uh, Lane, uh, which is Claire's uh, personal private maid that's with her everywhere. And like I said, she's best girl, best minor character. Uh, I'll talk about the treatment of minor characters uh, soon enough. Because uh, I believe ch a chapter, uh, I believe at chapter 3 I can finally talk about Lena and the re and therefore the rest of the minor casts and uh pretty soon enough as well or uh, someday soon uh, May and the Leia which is Ray and Claire's uh, daughters 
Twin daughters. Because, uh, yeah, uh, we get more characterization to uh, Lane, and uh, she interacts with people and uh, her relationship uh, Lane's relationship with Claire as a maid is supposed to in a sense uh, be some kind of obstacle uh, that ev eventually uh, Ray has to face uh, not in the sense that she'll have to fight Lane although spoilers they do fight <laughs> In the end, near the end. <laughs> but more so in the sense that uh, Ray, in an effort to get closer to Ray, uh, to Claire, uh, becomes one of her maids. However, uh, Claire already has Lane, and Lane has been with uh, Claire for like a really long time. I think that cliff actually is just glitched in this mod for reasons that escape me. So, well, my Aka my trip in Akala wasn't fruitless, but good God, this is gonna be annoying. Uh, because Lane is supposed to represent uh, what Ray uh, wants to be as a maid uh, for Claire, and well, more than just as a maid. Because uh, Lane is this uh, cool uh, person that's very uh, close and knows uh, Claire very well. Uh, and Ray wants to be like that as well. And uh, yeah, uh, her character, uh, her backstory and how she relates to Claire, uh, as well as her personality and her devoutness to her job, her loyalty, uh, makes her fate uh, in the series uh, a very lovely and tragic one. Because yeah, she's Lane is... Spoilers, a tragic character. Uh, but uh, we'll talk about that later. Uh, because ultimately, Lane is supposed to represent one of the many facets of the problems of the society that Villainess is facing. Uh, because again, the main theme of Villainess is discrimination. And Lane is ultimately a tragic victim. <laughs> of the system of nobility that Ray is working so hard to both to abolish and protect Claire from yeah. oh. I guess I'm just riding Unless I can find... It would be really nice if I could. Sheikha battery. Teleport. With which I could teleport. Minus six defense, that's not gonna matter. Uh, but other than that, yeah, I I really don't have much to say about the middle of chapter two. Uh, just the beginning as well as the end, which like I said, the end 
Okay, it's all about that gender ever, uh, gender band who uh, made cafe because uh, that entire arc is amazing. Uh, it shows us Lane's uh, dignified policy of what she believes about a maid and like uh, forces and gets Claire <laughs> to become submissive and breedable. Uh, sorry, I had to say it. I couldn't resist. Uh, I, th I thought of the word submissive and then I just had to meme and say and breedable as well. <laughs> How uh, about make your homework submitted and readable? <laughs> yeah, the whole training arc to get prepared to get the knight, the cavalier prepared <laughs> for the cafe. And uh, it does serve to characterize the three princes uh, even further. Uh, they're minor characters. Uh, Rod and Thane. <laughs> Uh, start off uh, during Act 1, they are a bit prevalent. Uh, while you starts off being not all that prevalent, but then uh, later on when the twist with him is revealed, which is foreshadowed in the gender bent may, uh, made thing as he's shown to be the only one that's genuinely having fun pretending to be a maid. <laughs> Uh, whereas Thane is just being more edgy, and uh, Rod, who uh, being the very person to suggest the idea, who uh, actually showcases us a very big character flaw that he has uh, that's ironed out a bit. That being uh, the reason who uh, Ray hates Rod specifically is due to his stubborn uh, personality, uh, where he thinks the whole world revolves around him. Uh, another important part of that stubborn personality of his is the fact that he's actually pretty. St is the fact that he's actually sexist. Cause yeah, if you pay any bit of attention to how uh, Rod uh, reacts, especially uh, and how he treats uh, the female cast, which is most of the cast of villainess. <laughs> Uh, you can see the uh, fact uh, that Rod is very sexist. <laughs> and how he's humbled uh, by the end of the series. Uh, and Thane gets a chance to prove himself in the future, whereas you will talk about her eventually. <laughs> Let me try a different angle. Can't scale a cliff one way, scale it another way. Big brain. Let's make a save here. And then... I made it. I made it! Game's not crashing. Yet. I do have a run soul. Yeah, just the five minute one. Good. I want speed.
the game crashed, didn't it? I fucking hate this mod so fucking much. I could almost swear these crashes are made on purpose. For what reason, I would not know. But I fucking hate it. If it wasn't for the fact that I'm just playing this so I have something to do while I fucking gush, <laughs> then I really just won't be- I really just shouldn't be dealing with this. But fortunately, I am almost done. <laughs> this will be a one and a half hour video. Because I am almost out of things to talk about regarding chapter two. Is uh, where am I? Yeah. <laughs> Overall, the princess, as a as the as minor characters, who I like to say they're pretty decent, and who the way they're handled here is bearable enough. Like I read my Yuri stories because I want I want women. <laughs> so that's weird to say out of context. Uh, but yeah, we are introduced to quite a lot of male. <laughs> minor characters here a lot of which are actually pretty important because yeah there's a whole bunch of people in the knights academy that'll become relevant in the later chapters to come and you could say the entire chapter <laughs> is just some kind of foreshadowing uh, and planting seeds for the finale <laughs> Which is, you know, that's that's respectable, but yeah, ultimately Ray and Claire, final verdict. <laughs> They're still pretty hateable here, but it's still a captivating read, nonetheless. Like I said, uh, the entire trial exam where they get to fight is very interesting and fun to watch. Not exactly comedic, the characterization and all the little interactions. While Ray and Claire are annoying, and I did, and I didn't find it funny, um, I found it, you know, interesting and captivating to read, nonetheless. And then finally, uh, I, I actually uh, by the end, because yeah, the chapter ends uh, once the whole festivities end. Uh, ah, yes. Uh, this chapter also does explore uh, a character flaw of Ray that, uh, and uh, for sha uh, and one that she has to overcome, and that is uh, again Ray is a selfish character. Uh, she prefers and likes doing things alone, and she doesn't believe she can and should. And trust her own her own desires to other people, even if another person is the source of her is her goal. In which case, Claire. Uh, cause as is revealed in the spin-off, uh, Claire has already begun finding. Ray and her antics somewhat endearing and has begun slowly but surely falling for her. Uh, but Ray, uh, believing uh, that she literally has no chance, uh, essentially uh, just decided she'd rather just keep the status quo rather than try advancing. Which, you know, common and is a common and understandable fear in love, and we see it written. Uh, all the time it, in romance stories as well as just stories in general where there's a budding romance involved where two people like each other uh, but neither of them are brave enough uh, to take the next step so they kind of just uh, stagnate <laughs> and stuff and whether or not they can overcome that barrier and finally confess their love or uh, 
or it turns into a tragedy where it becomes too stale and they leave. Because yeah, we get to see a lot of uh, race obstinateness here. Uh, which makes it all the more satisfying, I suppose, uh, to see her grow as she uh, finally takes the reins uh, by the end of Act 1 and starts to learn how to rely on others and to not be so selfish and stubborn. Oh, I'm being called. Yeah? Alright, hold on. Uh, not be so selfish and stubborn. Ah. Fuck. I forgot the vibe be screwed us all the way over there. What if- I'm being called for dinner and I'm basically done with my thoughts now- by now anyway. Are you kidding me? Oh, whatever. Uh. Cause yeah, uh, this is exemplified in the final scene of this chapter, where Ray gives uh, Claire a good luck charm, uh, a good luck charm for romance, <laughs> where Ray essentially, uh, contradictorily, encourages Claire to go after Thane, uh, despite making it clear <laughs> that she uh, wants to be with Claire. Uh, and doesn't want Claire to fall for anyone else. Uh, and then... Uh, Claire accepts it, but is also sad about it. Uh, which... Uh, I don't know, there's some symbolism uh, 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 behind it, but for now, all I can really s uh, say about it is that that's supposed to represent the fact that Claire is feeling very confused with her feelings uh, for Ray. Uh, right around that moment, uh, you could say she is starting uh, to fall. <laughs> For Ray, who is this weird, mysterious person that knows a lot of shit that she really shouldn't, and you know, is very devoted, <laughs> devout to Claire <laughs> specifically. Which you know, who who wouldn't uh, become? curious when they have a person like that always vying for their attention so yeah that's it we're moving on next time to chapter three the final chapter of the volume and the chapter i say where uh, villainess villainess's story uh, and ray and claire's relationship finally start getting good he, at the end of the goddamn volume at the end of the goddamn book. The commoner movement, baby. It's finally where things finally start becoming political.